here in Martinique and we're talking about tonal values, lights and darks. And uh, we're using that as a motif to begin a new series called The Seaside. The next few tutorials will be based on images of the ocean and seaside. You can see this picture has a striking portrayal of palm trees, bright sandy beaches, distant water, boats, clouds in the sky, evocative of a, a kind of paradise setting. And we're going to do a tonal study first, thinking about um, a grayscale version, or using one color to create our image. And we're starting with the lighter area, which would be the sky. Even though this sky will eventually be covered with palm trees, uh, we're going to address it as though it were not. We're going to be painting it with clouds. Uh, the darker tones that you see are representing blue sky, and then the whiter, lighter tone is the cloud passing in front. The darker tone was painted uh, into the wet area. This is uh, evoking distant hills. Uh, below that, we're painting uh, the water, the water of uh, Martinique. And uh, look at the angle that that's creating. That's giving us a wonderful shape for our uh, surf and sand, which we're now painting. Pretty much staying within a similar tone, except for that distant shoreline. And uh, we'll be adding some darks. We're saving our strong darks for the palm trees and uh, the shadows that are going to fall on the foreground. Uh, strokes that I'm adding now with a smaller brush are giving us a feeling of the surf coming up onto the sand. So even at this stage, it's kind of kind of a nice painting, nice composition. Anyway, uh, we've set the stage. We're going to be painting on dry paper now with a strong medium tone. This medium tone is going to push everything into the distance. And we're starting with a, a feeling of the palms overhead. Um, this sort of work is not really copied from the photo or even from from uh, nature, leaf for leaf, but rather looking for a pattern, a pattern that's generated by uh, the shapes of the different palms. They have very long, skinny, uh, leaves that come off and the palms tend to hang down on an arc and they're all gathered at the top of the tree. So that's what this pattern is aimed at evoking. I uh, placed uh, just a reminder of where the trunks are coming up and I'm going to build the uh, palm trees canopy based on those uh, um, marks that I made for the trunks of the tree. And I'm staying with a one tone for now, creating a silhouette against the sky. Later on, I'll introduce a darker tone to give a suggestion of a shady side, a bright side and a shady side to the palm. And um, we'll create a feeling of light that way. So here's that darker tone. Apply it in the same manner with the same brush, thinking about defining the underside of the canopy and making the top palms feel a little brighter, the lower uh, palm underneath just a little darker. And once we finish that up, we'll move on to um, a little jetty of land that's on the left hand side. And all these darks, you can tell uh, the trunks the fronds above, the palms above, they're pushing back that background that we painted initially, which was of um, whites and kind of medium strength tones. Now we're getting into some darker tones. And basically with watercolor, this is a good thing to remember that uh, darker tones translate into less water, more pigment, less water. So when you're mixing your tones, sometimes it's hard to judge the quality when it's in your palette. But if you pay attention to the thickness, how thick is that paint? That will provide, that will actually be more helpful in judging 
how dark it's going to dry. So when I'm mixing up these colors, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking how dark uh, or how thick is this paint, and that gives me a clue as to how dark it's going to dry. Uh, we're placing some boats now, boats into the scene, and uh, with a similar value to what we used on that near land mass. And uh, following this, <clears throat> we're going to apply some shadows. I'm wetting the sand first with just a, a brush full of water because I'd like to get some soft edges. And I'm trying to place these strokes so that they make, so that they feel like they're lying on that plane uh, that's created by the sand. And I'm trying to generate a nice pattern, <clears throat> pattern just as I did with the fronds up above. I'm not following the photograph exactly. I'm trying to uh, relate these shapes that I'm creating to the masses that are overhead. And we'll leave some spaces there for the, the light that's dancing through. And some stronger darks into the palms. We'll make the palms just a little darker and, and not like a solid line, but uh, rather a dry brush stroke to where it's um, got some darkness, then that it fades or it gets smaller and then it gets dark again. This helps to create a bending or a more of a three-dimensional quality to the trunk. And you can see it's dried. A lot has dried quite a bit lighter. We may go back into some of the shadowed side of the palm trees and deepen those a little bit. It's very hard to repaint the shadow. If it dries lighter, so be it. But um, it's one of the tricky parts because we're trying to get it to happen uh, all at once, the, the, the cast shadow that's on the beach. If we, if we go back with the second layer, often we end up losing the freshness or some of the beautiful edges that are created when we paint it uh, wet into wet like that. So better to leave it as it is. Anyway, it's getting that finished quality and, and we've relegated this to basically a, a light tone in the back and on the water, mid-tones through the sand and mountains, and some strong darks through as accents through the palms. And um, this will be a structure that we use even when, though we're going to interpret it um, into a, a color image. So we're starting now with the sky in the same manner, using a little, just a little tinted water to get started because I'd like some soft edges into those clouds and I'll follow that with the medium strength cobalt blue. And I'll paint into those wet areas with the cobalt blue and generate some lost and found edges. This is a simple and effective way to paint clouds um, so that we get a big kind of billowy type of cloud that has some soft edges and uh, some sharp or, or hard edges. We bring this blue right down to the horizon and we're going to place um, that distant mountain uh, with a little stronger blue, a grayed blue. It's got a bit of probably a bit of yellow ochre to it to give it a slightly green appearance as it dries. And we want those nice soft edges. Uh, and we're working pretty much from top to bottom. Sometimes we, we change that order, but we're depending on gravity a little bit too to help us to mix uh, the washes at times. You notice I, as, as I'm I'm placing a, a bit of cobalt turquoise into my blue now so that I get a slightly different color to the water surface. It's uh, close to the same tonality, almost just as dark, but I added a bit of cobalt turquoise. And one thing I'd like you to notice is on the water surface, uh, I, 
I let the paint run out of my brush and I kept some of the dry brush. What that does is create a bit of sparkle on the water, which is effective to show us that the light is high and shimmering off of the water surface. So that's an application of dry brush. And to that, bringing it right up to the shore, I had a few darks of that same color to give a feeling of a wave kind of cresting and rolling onto the sand. And then following the in the lower third of the painting with just a, a pretty flat wash of yellow ochre. In doing all this work below the mountain, the water, and the sand, it's given my sky a chance to, to dry. So I'm starting by placing uh, this palm that's coming in from the right-hand side and um, mixing up a bit of color for the, the palms uh, that are going to follow this. I'm using a mixture of some of that yellow ochre, some of that cobalt blue, perhaps a little bit of cadmium yellow if I want a stronger green or a stronger yellow into the palm tree, which the photograph shows us. I'm not sure if I'm going to build that into this image. Anyway, much like the tonal version that preceded this, I am very much thinking of the pattern that this palm tree is creating up above. I'm not trying to replicate it leaf for leaf, frond for frond. I'm trying to emulate the pattern that's generated by the, the shapes that go into making the palm. And uh, the same will apply for the the two that are on the left hand side some good examples you can find in watercolor uh, Winslow Homer is a favorite who painted in Florida and the Caribbean quite a bit and his watercolors of palm trees are really fascinating so it's another good thing to look at as you work through this series and here I've I've kind of joined them they're forming a very strong canopy up above. I let some of the the parts of the palm trail down a little lower, trying to get some interesting shape there. And I darken up parts, leave other parts kind of that pale green, as though they're in the light. And I'm uh, doing this all with a similar size brush. It's a smaller brush, it's a sabolette. Uh, very good for making these strong kind of dagger-like marks that you see in palm trees. And those are primarily exposed at the edge of the palm tree. This is one area where <clears throat> on any shape where we can really show its character is at the periphery. So you see the periphery really uh, gives me a chance to show those bold strokes, those dagger-like strokes that go into making the palm tree. And we continue uh, now behind uh, uh, the palms because the area is dried back there. We can show this uh, closer jetty of land that's uh, coming towards us. And in the distance, guess what? We see more palm trees, some smaller palm trees. This is a great um, tool for a landscaper when you have a chance to repeat a shape or repeat an object in the distance. Making it smaller always you know, helps to create depth in the painting. Uh, the boat shapes. The boats can be complicated shapes, but since they're in the distance, uh, basically rectangles, right? They, uh, they're smaller shapes. They're, I'm saving some highlights on the top of the boats to, again, ref give a reference to that overhead light, the strong overhead light. But basically, I'm using three or four of those shapes to just give a little feeling of the the gathering of the boats. And it's a, a compliment to the area. I mean, we see those in scenes like this. We see boats out at sea, and we see them in the harbor, and that's what this painting is about. Well, I prepared the page in much the same way, and I'm starting now with a a thicker, darker mix. There we go. That's kind of what I was looking for. I'm uh, maybe overstating it, but I prefer to go a little darker than lighter. I learned from that tonal study that I 
my first estimate was a little wrong. It uh, had a little too much water mixed with the paint and it dried much lighter. It looked great when it went on. I was very pleased and then as it dried, that faded. So in this case, I'm perhaps being a little strong, but I think I, I gained that sort of uh, deep, rich shadow color that I'm looking for. And what this does is it communicates, of course, the direction of the sunlight, which is overhead. Also, the intensity of the sunlight. If we're painting on a bright day, our shadows are going to be quite strong, quite bold. So that's given me the courage to make this violet color. It's a, basically the blue mixed with a little bit of red uh, on top of a yellow ochre. So that ochre comes through, but it's really um, blanketed by a, a dark, rich shadow. And near the edges of the shadow, you'll notice I have put some smaller strokes uh, to give reference to the palms above. Some details, we're working with small brushes and darker passages now, making our boats look a little more like boats with masts that are coming up. And uh, we're starting to generate that feeling of Martinique, Martinique by the sea. It's winter here in Boston, so I'm, I'm looking at this scene with a lot of envy.